Hi everyone, I am Megan Sipple and I'm the Academic Success Coordinator for University of Wisconsin Stevens Point at Wausau. And today I'm going to be talking about how you can be successful in your online classes. This is extremely important, especially now since we all know we're in the pandemic and that means that pretty much all classes are online. This is a format that a lot of people do struggle with, so if you are struggling with it, that's okay. We're going to talk about some tips today um, for taking online classes and then also some motivational techniques. First and foremost, I hope that you all are doing well and that you're taking care of yourself. I know this is a very stressful time, so if you need to reach out for additional assistance, please contact me. Uh, my email is msipple, S-I-P-P-E-L, at uwsp.edu, and I can try and help you um, find the resources that you need. All right, so I'm going to share my screen and we can just jump in and get started. <clears throat> okay, so first and foremost, treat your online class like it's a real course because it is a real course. Uh, when it comes to online classes, you need to have the discipline to sit down and say, okay, I'm going to work on this, as well as the dedication to follow through. So though you can be flexible as, well, as to when you choose to complete your work during the week, you can't put it off indefinitely, right? So one of the easiest ways to ensure follow through is to remember that you're paying for this. You're paying to take this online class just as you would a traditional in-person class. So you have to show up. You have to um, actually be willing to take the time to learn if you're going to get real value out of your class. Treat your online classes the same way you would face-to-face -face classes, or better yet, a job, and you'll be off to the right start. So consider blocking out time in your schedule, just as you would for traditional face-to-face -face class, to work on online assignments, participate in discussions, and attend the virtual conference calls if that is applicable for your class. Setting aside those times will make you more accountable to um, actually do the work during that time which leads into um, holding yourself accountable. Make sure to set goals at the beginning of the semester or when you become an online um, student and check in with yourself weekly. In a traditional classroom setting, you'll often receive verbal or visual reminders of an assignment's upcoming due date from your instructor. But without a professor actively reminding you, it's up to you to make sure that you've allotted enough time to complete the work so you're not starting an assignment the day before it's due. If you're having trouble holding yourself responsible, pair up with a fellow classmate or enlist the help of a spouse or a partner or a friend to check in as an accountability partner. You can also schedule an appointment with me, the academic coach, to set up and achieve your goals. By being organized, proactive, and self-aware, you can get the most out of your online classes, even with life, when life outside of school becomes chaotic as it is right now. Um, so the third thing is to practice time management. The flexibility to create your own schedule is often one of the biggest appeals of taking an online class. But that freedom can also be detrimental if you do not have solid time management skills. Without those skills, you might easily um, find yourself cramming before classes or handling, um, handing in subpar assignments. Though how you manage your time will depend on your schedule, learning style, personality, um, some valuable tips to help you practice and improve your time management skills are the following. So look at the syllabus at the start of the semester, every single semester, look at all your syllabi. Make note of major assignments, so pip, pip, uh, sorry, papers, exams, um, quizzes, things like that, big chunks of points for your class. Mark them on your calendar um, that you check regularly so that you know what workload is coming in the weeks ahead and you can sort of plan around that. So if you have everything's due the week, week five, you'll wanna spread that out in the first five weeks, right? Um, so don't forget to factor in prior commitments that interfere with your regular study schedule, such as weddings or vacations, other work um, schedules outside of class, so you can give yourself enough extra time to complete the assignments. So create a weekly schedule that you follow something that's concrete so you study the same thing every week like on tuesdays from one to three you study math um, creating a weekly schedule designating certain hours for reading um, reading the textbook watching lectures completing assignments um, that's going to help you to commit and to make a habit of it 
Try logging into your course every day. Even if it's just to check for messages, it will become a habit. When working on your assignments, try time blocking, allotting yourself a certain amount of time for each task before moving on to the next one and setting a timer to keep you accountable. Check in periodically throughout the term and look at how you've been spending your time. Ask yourself, okay, how much time am I dedicating to the course and the reading assignments? Am I regularly underestimating the time it's taking me, get, taking me to get things done, uh, which has led to me forcing to cram for the nights before um, exams? A little bit of self-reflection and um, realizing how you've been doing things can help um, go a long way. Because if you're realizing, okay, I clearly am not dedicating enough time, then you can change something in time to um, hopefully prevent a bad grade because you don't want to waste your money, right? Or your time. Okay, so fourth one is to create a regular study space and to stay organized. So working from home can be really distracting, especially if you aren't used to doing it. So find a space in your house where you can avoid distractions such as technology and hunger so that you may be able to complete your work in a timely manner. So try to establish a, like a do not disturb routine and communicate that system um, with other people that you're living with. So whether that's roommates or your parents or um, a spouse, you can tune, um, tune out sound with music or ambient noise machines, or you may wanna turn um, your computer on airplane mode to avoid get going on the internet if possible. You could also download a website blocker, um, such as Cold Turkey or Freedom, to limit the amount of websites you can access. So keep your course materials organized in your study space by using folders or specific drawers. Um, by completing your work in your study space repeatedly, you'll begin to establish that routine that I was talking about. So whether it's at your kitchen table or, um, or the corner booth in a local coffee shop, which isn't really great for right now, but um, in the future, it's important to determine what type of environment will work best for you. Um, so whether that's like a, a park bench or something like that, it depends on the person. And you should experiment to discover what setting boosts your productivity. Wherever you choose, make sure to take um, your online course um, seriously and make sure you don't have a, la a lagging connection. So if you're gonna go to the park, make sure your cell phone's a hotspot. Um, Setting up regular workspace or office will help you um, stay organized, knowing exactly where important dates or files are located, like your syllabus, um, will help you keep yourself on track uh, towards hitting your goals. So when setting up your study space, make sure you have that high speed internet connection, have the required books, materials, um, and software for the course. So if that's chemistry and you need sapling, make sure that you have those things. Um, have headphones for listening to lectures or discussions, especially um, in, that's important in shared spaces. All right, so um, right now I'd like you to pause the video and take a 10 minutes to do the study space inventory, which is on the website, um, UWSP, um, TLC, Wausau, Google that, and you'll come up to the, you'll see the academic coaching link, click on that, and there are some helpful documents there, and I would like you to take 10 minutes to do the study space inventory, um, so if you could just pause the video and go find that, and then come back. Okay, so welcome back. Um, first, I want to ask you a few questions to help you reflect on um, the study space that study space inventory you just took. So did you recognize any areas that you could change for more conducive study space? Were the results what you expected to see? Sometimes people are really in tune with what where they um, know that they need to study, and then other people are really surprised by the results. So do you even, so if you knew, okay, yeah, I knew this was going to happen, do you still study in those places that are more distracting or do you normally study where you're most productive? Why do you think that is or why not? Okay, so <clears throat> some additional tips, uh, eliminate distractions. So from Netflix to social media to dishes piling up in the sink, you're going, to, you're going to be faced with many distractions that can easily derail your studies. The best online students know how to lessen those distractions and set aside time to focus. So exactly how much of a challenge these distractions will 
um, prove to be will depend on your own personality and situation. So some might find that they can tune out a noisy home by listening to music. Others might choose to work from a um, from like that outside, like in their backyard, um, depending on your Wi-Fi and stuff. So ultimately, you'll need to find a strategy that works best for you. So regardless of where you choose to work, consider turning your cell phone off to avoid losing focus every time a text message or notification pops up. And if you're still having trouble resisting the temptation to check your email or surf the web, try downloading a website blocker, like I mentioned before. So like Cold Turkey um, and Freedom, can eliminate distractions by blocking the apps or websites you tend to um, that tend to compete for your attention, like Facebook and Twitter uh, or Snapchat. Um, so take notes even when you're online. When the lecture is just a PowerPoint, slow down and take your time. When slides only contain a few bullet points, it can be tempting to read them and move on. Um, but in class, they might only have three bullet points, but you're missing anything that the instructor would have said. So you should treat it the same as you would an in, in class um, situation. You want to you want to understand exactly the nuances of those bullet points. Try reading them aloud, making comments to slow yourself down, force yourself to think about what's on the slide and how it relates to what you've already learned. When the lecture is a video conference, review your notes when you're done. Summarize the material in your own words, but also try to explain the material in terms of other concepts in the class. This is gonna make, um, it's gonna help your brain develop multiple pathways for remembering and understanding the material. The more ways you hear and process the information, the more easily it will be to remember. Teaching is one of the most effective ways to learn the material. So question as you go, note things that aren't clear to you, take your questions and look for answers in the textbook or ask a friend. Um, post your question on the class discussion board or email your professor, take notes and use those notes to study and prepare for exams. That's still the best way for you to prepare and learn the material. Self-testing is, um, studies have shown that's one of the best ways that you can retain information. Um, figure out how you learn best. So once you've established where you'll learn, think about when and how you want to accomplish your work. If you're a morning person, try and be available to study first thing. Um, if you're more of an out, a night owl, set aside an hour or two after dinner to, to um, log in and, and do your studying. If um, you have children and the kids require morning and evening attention, try to carve out a study session midday when they're, at, um, when they're down for their nap. Uh, if their children are napping. Brew your usual cup of coffee, put on your um, go-to playlist, do whatever you need to do to get in the zone and get down to business. Not everyone learns the same way. So think about what types of information help you the best um, to grasp new concepts and employ those relevant study strategies. If you are a visual learner, for example, print out transcripts of the video lecture to review. If you learn best by listening, make sure to build time into your schedule to play and replay the audio and video-based course content. Um, think about yourself as a learner and a student. How comfortable are you with online interaction? How well do you manage distractions when using a computer? Where and when do you learn best and what times and places are surefire study disasters for you? Think about your unique needs and make useful adjustments. So consider specifically what will um, be missing from your experience right now without in-person meetings. So see what you can do to build those missing pieces in in other ways or substitute other types of interactions for them. Another tip is activate uh, actively participate. Participating in online lectures and discussion forums will help you better understand the course materials just like your face-to-face -face classes. Engage with your fellow classmates. Make sure to check the course website regularly because that's how your instructor is communicating with you. You don't want to miss anything um, like a, announcements or assignment due date changes. Schedule check-in times with your schedule and treat it as seriously as you would treating um, your face-to-face -face classes. Stay connected with your stu fellow students. Like make plans to do um, study and discuss coursework using um, Canvas, Collaborate, or using chat functions, group meeting apps, or video conferencing um, like Zoom. When in doubt, don't assume, ask questions. Contact your professor using email or send a message on Canvas. And if you do feel yourself falling behind, speak up, say something. They, the instructors care about you. And if you don't speak up, they don't know that you're struggling. Um, don't wait until an assignment is almost due to ask questions or report issues. Email the, the professor and be proactive in asking for help. 
Um, ask questions and post your insights in an online discussion. Make meaningful comments on your classmates' posts, not just like, I agree, or that's a great idea, um, to further the conversation. Online classes can be very passive, but if you make them more active through meaningful and energetic discussion, you're going to learn a lot more. It's also going to impress your instructor. Um, the flexibility of online learning means that you have like 30 minutes before dinner plans. You can squeeze in a discussion response around your schedule. Um, you can kind of fit it in throughout the day. So you might be spending the same amount of time that you would. It's just split up. So set a goal to check in on the class discussion threads every day, at least once a day. Um, Leverage your network. Online classes may sometimes make you feel like you're learning on your own, but this couldn't be further from the truth. Most online classes are built around the concept of collaboration with instructors, professors, um, your classmates, working together to complete assignments and discuss lessons. Building those relationships with other students by introducing yourself, engaging in the online discussion boards, creating a group me chat function um, where everybody or a group of you get together. Your peers are a very valuable resource when you're preparing for exams or asking for feedback on assignments. So don't be afraid to turn to them to create a virtual study group. Chances are good that they will appreciate it just as much as you will. Okay, so Next activity is how do you procrastinate? So again, if you could pause the video, go to the UWSP TLC um, academic coaching website and do the activity um, that sh it's a procrastination inventory. Take that and then come back in like 10 minutes or however long it takes you and we'll have a little talk. Welcome back. So how do you procrastinate? Um, what, what are the things that you, um, that surprised you about this document? Um, did you, did it make sense for you? Um, are there any tips or things that you are struggling with that you need help with? If there are, please contact me and we can do, come up with a personalized plan for you. Okay, so what, happens when you procrastinate because chances are you're going to, right? Um, it's estimated that one-fifth of adults and half of all students procrastinate. Negative impacts of procrastination include diminished performance, poor mental and physical health, and increased stress, worry, and guilt. So longitudinal studies of procrastination have indicated that it appears to be self-defeating behavior pattern marked by short-term benefits and long-term costs. So why do we do it? While more research still needs to be done, um, researchers do tend to agree that the reason any individual procrastinates can vary depending on the person. So the cure for that person is going to be very different and specific. But here are some common ways that you might be procrastinating. You toss self-compassion to the wind. Um, researchers reported that individuals who demonstrated less self-compassion tended to feel more stress during tasks, increasing the likelihood of procrastination. So in those situations, you should try to talk to yourself with kind kindness, accept that you're human, and um, try to be an optimistic um, coach for yourself rather than a negative critic. Another reason is you've learned to procrastinate from role models. So maybe your parents or siblings or other important role models have demonstrated a put it off type of attitude, which you've adopted. In this situation, you should talk to yourself about the negative consequences, actually take some time to reflect on why you're doing this um, and try to think of what consequences those role, model, role models had to face when they procrastinated. And then try to find some new role models to mimic, specifically people who take action and experience positive results from it. Another reason might be you don't think you'll be effective at the task. So you might think, I don't even know how to do this, so what's the point? In that situation, if you need a skill upgrade, get one. Ask for help if it's available. If not, use new cognitive coping self-statements such as, I can learn as I go, or extra time on this task will increase the odds of me being effective. Um, try and go with a no failure, a growth mindset to reduce your self-doubt. Um, experiment and see what works for you. Studies also show that growth mindset where you think, okay, I don't know how to do this yet, rather than I just am not good at math, that will set you apart. Um, if you think, I just don't know how to do this yet, 
you will get there. You'll keep trying. You'll keep motivating. That's going to get you a better grade than thinking, oh, I'm just not good at math because that's just going to lead to you procrastinating and a self-fulfilling prophecy. So next, you might have a bias against a task. So maybe you think you're bad at a task like math or you've seen others um, have a hard time with a certain type of task. You think, I can do things, but not this. I can do... I can do biology, but not chemistry. What you should try is to challenge yourself to open your mind and prove that you're wrong, your bias is wrong. Use the task as an opportunity to combat this bias. Maybe your time estimates are a little off. You tend to uh, maybe that vastly underestimate how long it'll take you to complete a task at hand, as you also as underestimate how quickly you'll get it done. Um, you can try to make a habit of starting earlier than you think you'll need to and work on completing your task early. This might compensate for any deficiencies in time estimation. And then if you will finish on time or early, give yourself a reward for completing it. Um, focus on the gains of the future and more, the, more than the gains of the present. So, um, this focus can gain, um, the focus on the gains of the present leads to low um, frustration tolerance and you're more likely to persevere when the going gets tough if you focus on the future because you're not trying to you're not so present focused and thinking about instant gratification so remind yourself about the gains of the future and de-emphasize the frustration of the present uh, maybe your perfectionism gets in the way you might think it has to be perfect and it's over overly demanding standards that keep you from even getting started because you know how much work it's going to be uh, in those situations, try working on diminishing the importance of doing things perfectly and emphasize the importance of completing the task in a timely fashion. So if you get it done and it's not perfect, you're going to get a better grade than if it's not done at all. Um, so keep a list of examples of times when perfectionism has been unhelpful to you and, and of times when task completion has been more helpful. Uh, another thing is some depression or anxiety or another mental health issue. Um, it might delay you in taking action. You might know or suspect that you suffer from a mental illness and the effects um, can diminish your motivation, your concentration, or your pers perseverance. So in this situation, you might want to talk to a therapist or a counselor. Um, in addition to ruling out any physical causes for your mood or anxiety, proper treatment will usually include helping you set achievable goals given whatever condition you have, um, teaching you to break your tasks into smaller and more man manageable chunks. Um, another thing is discomfort and tolerance. It can lead to you in disengaging from the, um, from the task. So um, procrastination can come from a belief that discomfort should be avoided, right? And you practice procrastination whenever you feel physically or psychologically uncomfortable. So what you should try in this situation is to challenge your belief about tolerating discomfort and revise what you say to yourself to encourage yourself to engage in a task, even if it's only for a little while. Focus on long-term rewards that'll that you'll experience while persevering with the task. So stick with it. Start seeing discomfort as a prerequisite for growth. Sorry about that. Um, start seeing it as a prerequisite for growth um, rather than like a barrier. Um, utilize the um, pre-MAC principle, so rewarding yourself for doing the uncomfortable, such as balancing your checkbook um, with something that you like doing often, such as checking Facebook. So here are some references for um, where I got this information. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Um, I really appreciate um, you taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you found it useful. If you want to talk to me about more personalized um, strategies and ways that you can make your um, individual situation work, please contact me. Again, my email is msipple, S-I-P-P-E-L, at uwsp.edu. And I hope you all stay well.